It says I have and I do what it tells me to do. And I love my Bible, so I make this as a confession. I will meditate therein both day and night on a chapter in the morning and a chapter in the evening. And because I do that, my life is blessed. It's no more a mess. Now everything I touch, come on, everything I touch now turns to success. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Oh, Father, we bless you. Put your hands together for everybody joining us live on Facebook. Praise God. For those that are joining on YouTube, thank you for being with us today. I believe I've got an amazing word in my heart. I was telling my wife, this is going to be a great message, and I believe it will impact you. So give a hear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this another opportunity to meditate your word. Your word, O oh God, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We ask that you shine the word to us today by your Holy Spirit. We believe you've already manifested yourself in, in presence. Now we're asking you to speak through to us through your word. Thank you, Father, for the holy word spoken in us today. In the name of Jesus, we pray and all agree with you. Amen. Amen. Well, I've got a lot to say and not a lot of time to say it, so let's just dig right in. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, we find our text for this we've been on. This is the third one. In verse 8, it says this. Jesus says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. In the King James translation, he says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria unto the end of the earth. So we're in a series that's called Got Power. Somebody asked the question, Got Power? And so the question that we're examining in our own lives by direction of the Lord is do we have the power to deal in life successfully as we should? The specific he actually gave me the title um, in it is the message. Um, but he wanted me to call this authority. But the essence of this series is found here in Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8. Jesus said that we will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So in order to answer the question, God, power, you really have to answer the question, are you baptized with the Holy Spirit? Turn with me, if you would, to the book of Second uh, Thessalonians, chapter three, or Second Timothy, chapter three. I'm going to need help on the computer and connecting with you and your Christianity. In the book of Second Timothy, chapter three, verse five, it says this: Having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people turn away. Now, if we go back to verse 1, he's essentially saying that in the last days, some really bad things are going to happen. If you see terrible things happening with the weather, in the news, in your neighborhood, don't be alarmed or surprised. Jesus actually prophesied almost 2,000 years ago that the closer we get to the return of Jesus, that the worst things are going to get in the world. Uh, one of the things that, that gives me comfort is though it got really dark in Egypt, it was still light in the ocean where the children of God were. So even though it might get bad in the world around us, it doesn't have to get bad to us because of God. Amen? But in this list, he says in the last days, perilous times are going to come. You know, 
people are going to be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. They're going to put things ahead of God. They're going to uh, do bad things. And in this list, what's most outstanding to me is when he gets to verse number five and he says that there are going to be people that have a form of godliness and deny the power. Which, in essence, in comparison to what's in the list, doesn't seem to be that bad. I mean, they have the, the, the form of godlikeness in their lives, but they deny its power. It just, well, all they do is they deny its power. But this is so critical that I don't know about you, I don't want to be found in this list. I don't want to be in the list of murderers and robbers and thieves and, and, a, and a bunch of bad things that are happening. And so I believe that this has been brought to us by the Lord to examine in our lives are we those that he was prophesying about that have the form of godliness? I mean, godly people go to church, right? Godly people carry their Bible or godly people know the Lord. But do we have all of that in our lives but don't have the power? This will also help us understand why as a Christian I can be ineffectual at times as a believer. Amen? Amen. So we've also been assigned to look at Acts chapter 19 and verse number 11 through 17. So if you will go there for me. In Acts chapter 19, we find the story that, that demonstrates individuals who have a form of godlikeness but deny the power. The Bible tells of how God worked unusual miracles by the hand of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and evil spirits went out of them. So notice, God was doing some unusual things through Paul. I mean, people were being healed, had been possessed by devils, they were set free, and God was working a tremendous work. Amen. The Bible goes on to say in verse 13, then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits. Well, Paul had been ministering to people who had evil spirits, but he was doing it successfully. And so these gods, their job was to minister to people who had evil spirits as Jewish exorcists. They heard it and they took it upon themselves to call or use the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, Jewish priests, who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? And the, the man in whom this evil spirit was leaped on these guys. Seven guys. One guy against seven. How many of y'all think if you got seven of your brothers with you, you could take them? <laughs> I just got two brothers. I know I could take them, right? But this is one guy who's demon possessed against seven guys. He leaped on them, overpowered them, prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And verse 17 says that this became known to both all the Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. And the fear fell on all of them. And notice that the, and the name of the Lord was magnified. Between this week and next week, you're going to understand the importance of verse 17 that the name, as a result of this experience, it wasn't put down, but as a result of this experience, the name of the Lord was greatly magnified. You know, in this series, one of the things that it, we're examining, how does this relate to us? Are we like these Jewish exorcists that have the form of godliness, but don't have the power to deal with the devil in everyday situations? I don't know about you, but, you know, I, I oftentimes have to deal with the devil in everyday situations. I experiences in my own body where the symptoms of sickness and disease. I know that that's the enemy trying to put off on me something that doesn't belong to me. How many of you all would accept the package that was sent to you from the pit of hell incorporated? The guy from UPS is trying to get you to sign for the package. And you're like, well, who was it from? I wasn't expecting a package. 
Well, who is it from? It says, well, it's from the devil, from the pit of hell incorporated. But, sir, I got to get going. Will you just please sign here? How many of you sign for that package? I'm signing for no package from the pit of hell incorporated. I'm not accepting sickness and disease in my body. I'm not accepting the devil running rampant in my marriage or rampant in my children's life or rampant on the job. No, I expect to be able to exercise authority and dominion over the devil and over all the evil works. Amen. But how many of us have found ourselves like these Jewish exorcists that have the form of godliness but don't have any power when it comes to dealing with the devil? We try to cast the devil out of our marriage, but he keeps coming back. We try to cast the devil off of our money, but it still seems to be in hold. And in situation after situation, we find ourselves having the form of godliness but not seemingly having the power it takes to deal victoriously with the enemy. Amen. Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Y'all remember he said that? Well, where, where, where did they even get that from? I mean, the fact that the devil knows Paul's name is unique. Well, here's, a, and I was prompted by the Holy Spirit, and I really want you to glean from this. In Acts chapter 16, we have a situation where Paul exercises authority over the devil. He was pestering him, bothering him in an area. And Paul dealt with the enemy, and the enemy left. Notice in Acts 16 and 16, it says this. Now, it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met, met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. Now, you all know how I do. I don't like to read the word without understanding or comprehension. Uh, one of the things I've been taught is to go there in scripture. Literally imagine being on the scene when the occasion happens. So I want you to put yourself in mind. He says, now it happened. This is something that actually happened. This is not a fair Story to somebody. He's an eyewitness of this particular situation. It happened as we went to prayer. Well, who wrote, who wrote the book of Acts? Actually, you know, the gospel was written by Luke, right? If you don't know this, Luke also wrote the book of Acts. So Luke was one of Paul's companions at one point in this story. So Luke was there and Paul was there, and maybe um, at midnight, Paul and Barnab Barnabas was there. This is Acts chapter 16. And so sure enough, these guys are going into prayer. Well, we opened up the book of Acts with Peter and John going into the temple at the hour of prayer. And it's, you know, obviously they had prayer at church or prayer gatherings at set times through the day, throughout the week. And so it was just their occasion. One day they were going to prayer and a girl that was hired or, or owned by some, some folks had a spirit of divination. She was a fortune teller. Now, can I, I don't know about you. It's always weird for me to see, like you can drive almost anywhere in Houston, look at a strip mall, and there might be one of the occupants, a psychic. Y'all know what a psychic is, right? A palm reader, right? A fortune teller, a soothsayer, you know, whatever the case is. And I always wonder, because we, we rented a, a, a strip mall for five years at the beginning of the church. And man, I remember what the rent was. And I'm thinking, how in the world can a psychic even afford to be in that building, right? Surely nobody's going in there. Oh, yeah, somebody's going in there paying all that money. Matter of fact, it says of this girl, that, who was a psychic or a fortune teller, she made her masters much profit. In other words, she tell, she tell them something. Y'all don't like this message? I'm going to preach it anyway. It's like, ooh, we talking about psychics in the church. What the Bible talking about psychics? Well, she made them a lot of money telling them what she was telling them. And she's got this evil spirit that's working on the inside of her. And so as they were going to prayer, there was a girl there that had this. This girl followed Paul and us while they're going to prayer. So maybe she passed by, they're passing by the way, and here she is. And so all 
sudden she's get up. Now she's walking behind them and they're going on, going on. And she cried out while they were going. These men are servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. Now that actually ain't bad. Are they servants of the most high God? Are they proclaiming the way of salvation? How to get saved? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of pretty good advertisement. But who wants the devil doing their advertisement? Come on, talk to me now. I mean, you know, we do marketing here at the church, but I don't want the devil marketing Faith Family Church. I don't want the communications director to be somebody demon-possessed and that everybody knows is a psychic. You know, they might think that I'm company with them. The Bible says that this she did not just a couple days, not just a few days. She did this every day for many days. So you get up one day and there she is. These men are the, she's telling the truth. These men are the servants of the most high God. They come to show us the way of salvation. They go on into prayer and come on out. Next day they get up. She does it again. They come on out. Next day, doesn't say a few days. She did this for many days. And if you look at it biblically, oftentimes the word many goes from seven to 10 to two weeks. But one day, somebody say one day, one day, Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, not to the girl, said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. Amen. And of course, if you read your Bible, because everybody at Faith Family Church reads their Bible Monday through Friday. A chapter in the morning, chapter in the evening, you'll get to hear the whole story. Amen. But he cast the devil out of her. And how did he do it? Using the name of Jesus. So in Acts chapter 19, which is just a few chapters away, these guys had heard Paul's preaching in the name of Jesus. They're Jewish exorcists. That's their job to cast the devil out of, out of folks. So they said, we cast you out, we command you in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches to come out. And he said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Evidently, Paul had authority to deal with the devil successfully. And the reason why we're spending the time to go through this series is to learn how we, too, can successfully not be like the sons of Sceva, but be like the sons of God. Amen? Amen. There's another story I want to show you here in the book of Luke, chapter 4. Because they said, Jesus, I know Paul, I know. Well, we looked at an example of Paul, and there's other examples of Paul dealing with the devil. But here's one of Jesus dealing with the devil early in his ministry. Luke chapter 4, verse 31 says he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbaths. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. Can I pause right there? This may not be the most entertaining service that you've ever attended, but I can tell you, I can assure you, you're going to learn something today. Amen. Amen. And whether you're new in the faith or you've been a believer for a long time, you'll grow today. Why? Because I'm doing what Jesus did. I'm teaching you the word of God. Amen. Amen. Well, they, they, he was teaching. They were astonished. They were like, man, I never saw that before. Whoa, that's a powerful word. Whoa, that's a good man. He, he must have been like a faith family church. <laughs> sure enough, his word was with authority. Remember, we were talking about authority and power today. There's two. Verse 33, now in the synagogue, this is in the, the assembly, the congregation of the church, there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, and, he, and, and he's saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. So now notice, just like this girl that had a spirit of divin divination, he, he's there to t just to do his job. He's there teaching. But all of a sudden, this, in, this evil one is speaking out against him. Have you ever been there where you were just on the job, just doing your job, and somebody had a problem with you? Just saying stuff that was greatly annoying, kind of like that other girl. Now, you may not have been realizing that there's a, an evil spirit influencing them. Come on. Have you ever dealt in a relationship, in a marriage, or, 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 or with a family member? And it's just, they are just so annoying. Right? 
Well, what you should realize that it's not necessarily them, but a, it could be a spirit behind them that's annoying you on that job, that's calling you out, trying to, you know, that, that's agitating you and pushing your buttons on a regular basis. So he speaks out. He says, leave us alone. What are we here to do to you? Jesus? Never, did you come to destroy us? Well, I can't stand you. Did somebody come on the job? I can't stand him. Just look at who does he think he is? Come on. I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him saying, be quiet and come out of him. How many of you all wish you could rebuke some folks on your job? <laughs> and that's really what we should do in dealing with the enemy. We should be able to rebuke the devil and tell him to get out of your house, get out of your finances, Get off of your children. Come on. To leave you alone and stop annoying you. And it ought to be that in the same way that he dealt effectively that we can deal effectively. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? He said, be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and did not hurt him. Verse uh, 36 says this. Then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, what a word this is. For with authority and power, he commands unclean spirits and they come out. You know, when I got this message, it was on a Thursday, I believe. And man, it came to me so clear. I thought I was going in a different direction, le leaving off from where we were last week. You know, I've had in my mind, okay, well, we'll minister in this direction. But it came so clearly that today and even next week, I'm supposed to minister to you about authority and power. Then as I went to study the scriptures as it relates to authority and power, I see that that phrase that God gave me to minister to you is actually in scripture. How did Jesus, unlike the seven sons of Sceva, that had who had the form of godliness, but when they used the name of Jesus to deal with a situation, it didn't work. How did Jesus and even Paul in dealing with the devil, how did they do it successfully? They did it because they did it with authority and with power. How many of y'all know there is a difference and it takes both authority and power? You know, the police have authority and some degree of power. For example, you know, around town, we'll have different businesses that are huge, got thousands of employees. And certain times at, at the rush hour times, they'll have an officer out on the street directing traffic. Or if an intersection light goes out or something. How many of you ever seen the police officer there? That, you know, they're blowing whistles and sometimes they get real fancy with it. But it's interesting, and I learned this early in life, that that officer doesn't really have the power to stop a car. Certainly not to stop a semi-train. I mean, it could run them right over. But why do people stop? Do they stop because of his power? Or do they stop because of his authority? So there is a difference between authority and power. That badge represents the state of Texas. And if they say stop, they're not speaking in their own individual name. They're speaking in the name. Matter of fact, the state of Texas versus you. <laughs> right? On that speeding ticket or, the, you know, you done read through something. Or, well, it's the state of Texas. It's not this individual's officer. It's not this particular judge or this particular prosecutor. No, it's the state of Texas. Why? Because that guy has that badge on his chest. He's been authorized. Let's talk about power for a moment. Now, he may not have the power to stop a car, but he does have the power to stop you. <laughs> Am I right about that? So he is equipped not just with authority. I'm, I'm talking about how was Paul able to deal with the devil and sickness and disease in his life and in the lives of others? He did it with authority and he did it with power. And how did Jesus do it? The Bible says he was able to deal effectively in life against sickness and disease and against the enemy when he came against him. He did it with, come on, y'all help me now, with authority and with power. 
in the book of Acts chapter 19 one more time. It says here that these itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves. It was as if the Holy Spirit highlighted that for me. Because one of the reasons why they weren't able to successfully have victory in this situation, one of the reasons, not just that they didn't have the power, they also didn't have the authority. They didn't have, matter of fact, they don't even believe in Jesus. They're Jewish exorcists. And again, that doesn't mean there's certain people in the Bible that are Jewish believers. Even today, there are some Jews that are Jewish believers. But then there's others in the Bible and today that are Jews, children of God by birth, but they don't believe in Jesus. How is it then that they could take it upon themselves to use Jesus' name and they don't believe in himself? Right? So what's happening here? They don't have, as it were, the authorization. So my question to you today is, have you been authorized to use the name of Jesus? Because I know you've been using that name and you've been trying to use that name to deal with situations that are going on physically in your body. Dealing with situations that are going on in your children's life. You've prayed in the name of Jesus. You've cried in the name of Jesus. You've sung about the name of Jesus and, and that great name, Jesus. But you, 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 it seems like you've not been effectual. It seems like the devil in your face is saying, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know, but who are you? My assignment today is to just simply show you from the word that you have been authorized to use the name of Jesus. What also am assigned to show you is why you may have used his name, but with no effect. Once you see that you have been authorized, it may be that you've been authorized to use it, but you don't have the power. How many of y'all know it takes both? Amen. Is there power in the name of Jesus? Let's think about that for a moment. In John chapter 14, I want to show you that you have been authorized. In John chapter 14 and verse number 12, Jesus says this. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these will he do, or will he do because I go to my father. My first question is this, who's he talking to? Because it says, I say to you, but that back then, he was talking to a bunch of disciples that were standing there with him. Just because Jesus says something in the scripture doesn't mean that it applies to you. You have to interpret from what he is saying if it applies to you. So when you slow down and read it, what is he saying? Most assuredly, I'm saying to you who believe in me. Let me ask you a question. Is there anybody in this room or online and you believe in Jesus? Then he's talking about you. What is he saying? He's saying, if you believe in me, the works that I do, you will do also. And greater works than these shall you do because I go to my father. My question to you then is, are we doing what Jesus did? When the enemy came against him and he cast him out, we also did successfully. Come on, somebody. If we believe on him, then what he does, we have the ability. Whatever you ask in my name, underline that if you've got a Bible that you write in. He says, ask in my name, I will do. That the Father may be glorified. And he says again, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. We were talking to dear brother shared earlier how he was in a situation financially and he was believing that not have to go into debt. How many of y'all know anything means anything? If you've got a bill that's due, if you've got a child that's going in the wrong direction, if your marriage is not quite what you want it to be, and if you go and you declare in the name of Jesus and you ask for something to be done, what does that verse of scripture say? He says, I will do it. I will do it. It's not an if. It's not a maybe. I might do it. I might be able to do it. Well, it just depends. Come on, yes, somebody, can you do me a favor? Well, it depends, right, on what that favor is. But he says, whatever you ask in my name, 
If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Well, if, if just like in the seven sons of Sceva, they were using the name of Jesus, but it was without effect. They didn't have the authority, neither did they have the power. What I'm showing you through this is this is that moment that actually gives you the authority to use the name of Jesus. He says it in John chapter 15. In verse 16. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. So check this out. This is the second time. Somebody say second time. Is it too hot in here? So why are y'all kind of quiet? Come on. I'm one of doing all the work under the lights. Amen. He says a second time, if you didn't get it in chapter 14, he makes sure you understand that you have the authority. Say, I have the authority to use his name. Think about it for a moment. If you were going into the bank and you wanted to make a withdrawal and you come in and you say, well, you know, you give them the number to the account and they come in and they say, well, no, this is not your name on this account. I, you know, well, is that the account for Bill Gates? I won't make a withdrawal. Like, yes, sir, this is the account for Bill Gates, but uh, what's your name? You don't look like Bill Gates, <laughs> right? He, and you go and you're talking about that, and he says, you know, this account, and then you give him your name. How many of y'all know if Bill Gates puts your name on that account, then you can withdraw. Come on, somebody help me now. If you've been authorized. You know, you go in and you sign papers to, to authorize signers to the account. Well, this is Jesus authorizing you to use his name for whatever you ask. So let's go back over this again. He said, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. Say it out loud. I am chosen by God. You know, the Bible says many are called, few are chosen. We just finished a series about being called by God. You are called by God, but not only are you called. You know, what's the difference between being called and chosen is when you answer the call and you've, you've answered that call. And he said, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. But that's not it. I chose you and I what? Appointed you. Now, this is important. In the King James, it says, I ordained you. Another way to say that is I have deputized you. I've appointed you. Let me give you an example. In uh, Houston here, when I first moved here about 11 years ago now, I'm a Houstonian, <laughs> a Texan. I like that. But when I first moved here, because I moved here from Detroit. I'm, I'm, I'm a native from Detroit. I was born in Ohio, but grew up in Detroit all my life. And uh, we didn't have sheriffs. Especially not with the big hats. <laughs> Only sheriff we knew was what was on television, right? We just had the, you know, Detroit Police Department, DPD. The Popo. Back in the day, we call them 5 0, especially in an unmarked car. <laughs> but when I moved to Houston, they were sheriffs. And what's unique about a sheriff. In Houston is that they're called constables. Now, uh, many years ago, I learned Spanish. And in Espanol, ese una palabra es muy especial. Porque esta palabra es simple, pero es con. Por ejemplo, chili con queso. <laughs> Now, it is... It seems like the only thing you heard was chili con queso. <laughs> so, I need to go back and interpret what I said in Spanish. In the Spanish language, there's a very special word. It's unique to me. And it's just very simple. And it's the word con, like chili con queso. This word just simply means with. So chili con queso is, you know, okay, that's chili with cheese. Or ch chili con carne, it's, you know, hot meat. <laughs> so anytime I learned in the, in the Spanish language, trying to learn, anytime you use the word con, it just simply means with. So when I got here to Houston, I was trying to understand what is a constable. 
You know, almost sounds like constipated. I'm constable. <laughs> I didn't say that in the first service. I don't know where that came from. Well, I'm just trying to wake up. To, come on. <laughs> but listen to me. And then by, by, by just slowing down and trying to understand the word, it makes perfect sense. This guy is saying, I'm with stable. Well, I know stables are for horses, right? And not just a horse, it means for horses. I have a stable of horses back on the ranch, right? So what are you saying? He's saying, I'm not by myself. I'm not wearing this badge. You can run over me, but I'm not by myself. There's a stable. Y'all got to help me now. There's a stable. So I don't just have the authority to stop you. I have a backing. All of the state of Texas and all the authorities will come against you. You won't get out of Texas without Right? You have been deputized to use the name of Jesus. He said, I chose you and I appointed you so that whatever you ask the Father, just use my name and he will give it to you. That's like him signing authorization forms for you to go to the bank of heaven and withdraw whatever it is that you need. There's no way that a believer should be broke. There's no way that a believer should be sick. There's no way that a believer should be addicted. Why? Because you have authority in the name of Jesus. I'm preaching better than you saying amen. You don't remember Deputy Dog? <laughs> The internet is fascinating. I haven't seen Deputy Dog in about 30 years. But the thought came up in my mind because I remember. I know what it means to be deputized, not because of education, but because of cartoons. <laughs> right? Deputy Dog would get into trouble. His situation is bigger than him. And he would, I hereby deputize you. <laughs> Come on, now what's happening? He's given the authority authority that he has to this little bug and this little dude here and you know remember going by pile and all of that <laughs> deputy somebody say deputy dog <laughs> one more if you didn't get it in john chapter 14 if you didn't get it in John chapter 15, he gives you one more time telling you this. He says in John 14, 20, uh, six, uh, John 16, 23 this time, he says, and in that day, what day is he referring to? He's actually referring to this day. How do you know that? Well, when you read your chapter, you'll find out he's talking about after I die and I'm resurrected in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give it to you until now. You've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full in verse 26. He's oh, I missed that. So in any case, he's saying, ask and receive so that your joy can be full. He has given you the authority to use that name. So if you've used the name of Jesus ineffectively, it's not because you didn't have the authorization to use it. It's because you didn't have the power to use it. Or you were beyond your jurisdiction. And I might have to talk about that next week. But I can give you a tidbit of it. You know, I have a right to talk to my kids a certain way. You may not have that right to talk to them a certain way. But I have that right. I have a right to talk to my wife a certain way. You may not have that right to talk to her a certain way, right? And she has a right to talk to me a certain way. There's marital rights. And oftentimes then you'll find yourself trying to use authority that might be beyond your jurisdiction. Come back next week for the rest of that. <laughs> but I want to challenge you with this question. Is there power in the name of Jesus? I know the song says there's power in them. We just saying it. There's victory in that name. There's power in that name. You know, one of the other songs that we sing, there is power 
in the name of Jesus, there is power in the holy name. I'm not singing it right, but. <laughs> and I, I just want to challenge your thinking, even your theology, theology for a moment, because this was challenged to me. Is there power in the name of Jesus? Somebody said, yes, it is. Yeah. Now, y'all know this was a trick question. I'm setting you up. <laughs> Think about it. The Jewish exorcist used the name of Jesus and it didn't work. So if it's the name of Jesus alone, if the name of Jesus has all the power that it needs to get the job done, then why isn't it working on the job? Why isn't it working where that promotion or that school is concerned? Why isn't it working? You use that name where your children are good. You use that name where the sickness and disease is concerned. Why isn't it working? If there's power in the name of Jesus alone, then why isn't it working? Why, why didn't it work for those Jewish exorcists? Oh, I, I, I like when it gets quiet. Where did Jesus say there's power in my name? What he said was, whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it. But then what he said after that was, wait until you be endued with power. Have you been trying to use his name without power? Thinking that his name alone is enough. Tuck that away, because I can feel you pushing back. Some of you deep theologian scholars, I've... Now, I don't know about this one, Pastor. I've been saved longer than you've been alive. Don't go too far now. <laughs> I know I'm young. But always examine what you believe with the word of God. Don't take my word for it. And certainly don't believe it just because it's a catchy, a cool song. I mean, I've been singing about the name of Jesus for, for almost all my life. I can remember it. Y'all remember this song? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. What can ever stand before us when we call on that great name? Jesus, 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 we have the V. <laughs> Now, I remember, I remember that song, and this one, I love, I love God, I love church, you know, because that has been in my heart since I was a child. I'm like a seven-year-old child, I can remember that song, right? And I'm not, I'm not saying that there's not some power in his name, but I need you to understand how is it that you have used his name and the devil's like, well, I, I know Jesus. I know Pastor Stan. Pastor Stan is a bad man. But who are you? <laughs> right? If it's just in the name alone, then we need nothing else. If there's enough to deal in the name alone, then we wouldn't need it. But he said, but wait. And I'll give you one more scripture. And you, you'll, you'll be able to say, I'm almost done. So how many of y'all see clearly that you have been authorized? But the question is, have you been empowered? See, it's more than just the badge. You've got to have the power. As I get ready to close, here's that scripture I wanted to share with you. And you can go ahead and begin softly. In Philippians chapter 2, when I saw this, it, it, it ministered to me which is why I had enough boldness to even challenge, is there power in the name? Listen to what this scripture says. And listen with fresh ears. Because we're trying to find out why isn't it working? 
The doctor says I have cancer. The doctor says I have uh, d heart disease. The doctor says I have a respiratory disease. The, the, the doctor says that I have this. The doctor says I have that. The banker says I'm never, the, the world says I'm not. The school declined. The, 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 the marriage, we've been there in situation, and I've used the name, and I know I'm authorized to use it. But why is it not working? Why is it not working where my children are concerned? Why is it not working where my money is concerned? I'm calling that name. I'm singing that name. I'm crying out that name, but it's not working. And he said that there was going to come in the end of days, folks, that in the spirit they look just like God, got God's nature, but they don't have no power. Here it is. Therefore, God has also highly exalted him. Who is he talking about? Talking about Jesus. Because of what Jesus did. How he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Took upon himself the form of a servant. Died on the cross for you and for me. Because of that, he paid an ultimate price and did no wrong. For us, if they put us on the cross, we are there because we did a lot of wrong. But because of what he did, God has highly exalted him and given him not just a name, the name, which is above every name. His name is above cancer. I don't care what the doctor says. His name is above heart disease. His name is above arthritis. His name is above bone deterioration. His name is above every name. His name is above divorce. His name is above addiction. His name is above homosexuality. His name is above every name. You know, if they can give a name to it, I'm glad because his name is above every name. Watch this. That at the name of Jesus, that name that you've been authorized to use, every knee should bow. See, when I read that today, it was new revelation. Because I've sung about the power that's in the name. But then I've met people that use the name, but they didn't have power. Is the name void of power? Or are they void of power? Notice what the scripture says. Now let's get technical with it. This great name that we rejoice, at that name, every knee should bow. Somebody say it's not automatic. Every tongue should confess of things in heaven of those things on the earth, those things under the earth, that every tongue, what? Should. Say it out loud with me. Should. I'm getting ready to let you go home. I don't have no more after this. So if you don't get it, you ain't got it. Come on, so say it out loud. Should. You mean to tell me it's not automatic? You mean if I need money to pay my rent, it's coming up. August the 1st is on Thursday. I came to church today, Lord, because I need a word, Lord, because the rent is due and baby, baby going to need a new pair of shoes. I got a light bill, too. Come on, somebody. Oh, the name, the name, the name of Jesus. And you're using the name that's above every name. But you're not using it with power. Why? Because you haven't been endued with power. You've been authorized, but you haven't been empowered. Well, well, what do I have to do to be empowered to receive this power? You got to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Wait a minute. Are you talking about that tongues? I already told you, don't trip over your tongue. Don't trip over the tongues. Oh, see how quiet it got? Y'all better stand up on your feet. I'm done. But the reason that it got quiet is because that's real. You mean to tell me, Pastor Stan, that the way that I receive the endowment of power 
is by being baptized in the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues. And that if I'm not speaking in other tongues, then I haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying that. That's what Jesus said. That's what the word. Oh, I only got. Oh, come on, y'all. That's why we're in the series. Amen. Didn't get it on the first time. All I want you to see. The, the same way I'm saying don't trip over the tongues. The tongues come with the shoes. Some of you will get that on the way home. Some of us want the baptism, but we want to tear the tongues out. You don't go to the store and buy a new pair of shoes and tear the tongues out. Why? The tongues come with the shoes. <laughs> so I, my assignment in this series is just to help you understand where you are, where we are how we've used the name of Jesus without power. And, it doesn't, and, then, and now it doesn't make sense because I'm, I'm, I'm not getting results. Why don't you have results? It's not the name. The name is above every name. And at that name, every knee should. How many of y'all, that's like revelation to you? We thought that it was automatic at the name of Jesus. It's got to bow, right? Well, yeah, it's got to bow with the power that worketh in us. Elsewise, we're outside our jurisdiction. All right, I'll just keep at it on another day. Amen. Did y'all get anything out of the word of God? Amen. I'm going to pick this up uh, next week. I'm going to talk about authority and power again because it's still some more things that you need to see. Will you bow your heads with me? I want to pray for you just in case you don't know the Lord. And maybe you're here today and you want to give your life to him or you want to come back home to him. I'm going to lead you in a word of prayer. Mean it from your heart. God will say.